is by the fire of the Holy yes. Ghost. Amen. But it takes us, this generation here, us adults, to be ablaze as well. Because ultimately, except by the sovereign will of God, a generation that's not on fire cannot set a generation that's not on fire. Amen? It requires us to be ablaze. They need to see an example in each and every single one of us. That doesn't mean at church. Yeah, that doesn't mean at church. They don't need to see the example at church. They need to see it at home. They need to see it in us. Amen. They need to see that flame burning in us. They will live by what they see, not what they just hear. Amen. Now, I know God is a good God. He's a merciful yeah. Papa. And if you still taking that time to teach him and you're still trying to get to that place yourself, God's merciful. He will move. Amen. He will do the work. But I also, I believe that what the Lord is doing is he's, he's stirring up this body. He's stirring up this generation, the older generation right now, to start getting with the plan. Come on, With his plan. And with his purposes. Amen. And I see an awakening that's taking place in the body of Christ. I see it. And it's, a, it, it, and it's mighty. It's, it's powerful. Man, I, 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 the church without spot and wrinkle, this generation, that's what we're going after. We're going after that perfect obedience. And, and I was talking to my wife earlier, I think it was this morning, and, and I just said, it's just our desire. Like when I was ministering on perfect obedience, it wasn't out of this heart of just like, you got to obey God. Yeah. Oh. It was out of this heart of, oh, I want to obey God so much. And I pray that you basically desire that that's your desire too. Because God's the one who puts the desires within our hearts to want to obey. And it no longer ceases to be you have to obey. But it comes to I want to obey. It comes to a life of where you just, you're walking. It's a life of the Spirit. It's the Spirit that causes you to walk in obedience. It's the yieldedness to His Spirit. Amen? That's what causes you to obey. Hallelujah. And we know, as children of God, when we're being disobedient. Don't we? We know. There's certain things that have take place when we're disobedient. Some, they run from the house of God. Some, what they will do is they will be in the house of God, but they're not engaging. Yeah. There's not engagement with, with the Holy Spirit. There's a reservedness. There might be even just a little bit, hallelujah, you know. <laughs> there might be a little, okay, half mass kind of stuff going on. Yeah. And, 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 but when you have fully given yourself and say, I just don't care, I just give it all. Yeah. You know, like David, the, the, that's the way about David, that's the way his heart was. You know, he blew up big time, and what did he do? What did he do? He grabbed the hold, hold of the horns of the altar. I mean, he blew up big time. <laughs> and yet, here, what did he do? He threw himself upon, he threw himself upon God. And that's what God's wanting, really, of us, his people. He wants us to simply throw ourselves upon him. And then say, do what you need to do, Heavenly Father. And that time that you spend with him, that time that you fully just throw yourself upon him, is then he goes, ooh, good, I get to put myself in you. Yes. And he, yes. He's already done it, but he forms himself. Yeah. He's molding you. He's shaping you. He's maturing you by his spirit. You're no longer, you cease, you cease trying to do it in your own might. You cease trying to do it in your own strength. And, and all of a sudden you feel clean now because you threw yourself upon him and he cleans you all up. He sets everything straight. He sets everything right. And then you just start walking. You just start living. He just sets you on that path of righteousness and you just stay there. You just stay there. You know, though the righteous may fall seven times, they shall rise again. Just because you fell, does that mean you're no longer righteous? You're still made righteous, but don't wallow in that pit. Don't wallow in that place. Rise again. Get up out of it and say, this is not who I am. I'm going to go forward with the plan and the purpose of God for my life. I'm not going to live here. I'm not going to keep beating my
myself up, say I'm not good enough. Oh, yeah. I'm not up to that word of mention where Pastor Jason would preach that message about being <coughs> perfect and walking in perfect holiness. Understand this. It's not you that does it. It's not you that makes you perfect or mature or walking in that holiness. It's God who does it. He's the one that gave you holiness. He's the one that made you holy. You didn't make yourself holy. You just surrendered yourself. He does the work. And then the power of sin that was trying to uh, destroy your life was destroyed. Was destroyed. He has no right, no claim upon you, sir. You can't, can't get in unless you allow it again. Unless there is an openness to it. Unless there's there's kind of this eh, getting your eyes off the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're not remaining in the vine. That's why it's so important that you continue in your relationship with Him. That's remaining in the vine. That's what it means to remain in the vine. It means to stay in constant communication with Papa. When you stay in constant communication with Him, and you then you're going to remain in Him. And then you won't become a branch that dries up and then He has to cut off. Amen. 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 He doesn't want to cut you off. No. That's right. not his desire. He's not like, oh, I'm going to prune you. You can't, you can't produce nothing, so I'll cut you off. But that's not his attitude at all. Come on. He has to cut it off. He has to. Because it will, it will infect the rest of the tree. God is holy. There can't be any unholiness. There can't be any of those things around him. There can't be. Because the change is his nature. And his nature cannot be changed. It's his nature. It's just that simple. But it's more out of this love. It's like, come on now, you're better than this. You don't have to stay remaining in me. Stay in me. Stay with me. Stay with me. He's constantly calling. He's constantly beckoning back for everyone that has ever fallen into a place of sin that was a believer and believed in him, still believers, and yet still wallowing back and forth, back and forth. He wants us beyond that. See, I want everyone in this place getting to that where there, are, there is no wallowing going back and forth. There is no tottering. There's no, where everyone here is totally gone and made a decision and they're set apart. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it's just you surrender. It's just surrender. Surrender of your will. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm saying this because I want these, the youth, I want you to understand this. I know what the enemy's trying to do to you. I understand what he's trying to do to you because he tried to do it to me. He tried to do it to everyone in this place. You're trying to find out your identity and who you are and, and what's your place in this world. I'll tell you what your place is in this world. Your place is, is to be a man, a woman of God. That's your place in this world. Your place is to, to manifest the very life of Christ. You, that's your identity is the life of Christ. That's who you are. Amen? You don't have to find it in this world. And that goes for you adults. Yeah. Try to find acceptance. Yeah. Quit trying to find acceptance in, in, in friends and people that aren't really walking yeah. with the Lord. Right. Come on now. Yes. Find it with the Lord. Yes. You've been loved and you've been accepted. I mean, even in yes. Christendom, you got to watch it because it's rampant in Christendom. Yeah. Yeah. Finding this place of acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. Am I anointed enough? Am I a good enough right. preacher? Right. All this right. stuff. Right. Trying to find a place where you can fit in. Understand, let the Heavenly Father put you in where you belong. He's the one. He will plant you where you belong. He the, he's the one that puts you in the building where you're supposed to be. Because we are living stones. Don't ever allow the enemy to lie to you where you don't belong or you don't fit in or anything like that. No, you fit in. You belong. Because God, yeah, he, God made you acceptable. He made you accept in the blood. Yes. Yes. Not in your own ability, not in your own mind. It's in your surrenderedness, in your faith and belief in Him. Yes. You just simply believe. That's you simply right. have faith in That's Him. Right. That's how we're saved, right? Yes, sir. We must believe that He is. Amen? Yeah. We must just believe. And then you shall have everlasting life. That's it. Have faith. Have faith. When you have faith, then you start walking it. You start living it because faith has action. Yeah. Faith carries out an action. Not belief. There's belief in God. The, the demons believe and they, they tremble. Come on. Yes. 
but they don't have faith to carry it out. They can't be saved. But, but we get to have our belief, and once we have our belief in him, then we're empowered with faith. And when we're empowered with faith, then we start carrying it out. It's an action. It's an action. Amen? I will show you my faith by the what? The works Work. that I do. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Now, I don't do the works to show others that I have faith. Come on. Right. Right. Or that I'm righteous or that I'm holy. Mm -hmm. Or do works so that I so I can gain some kind of merits with God. Right. That's not it. The works come forth out of relationship. And you can see it in Krishna. You can see it with other ministers. Not all ministers. No, I'm not, so I'm not pegging everybody there. There are people that they have a deep relationship with God. And they're doing stuff. They're blazing trails. They're on fire. And, and they're burning for Jesus. But it's out of this relationship. It's the relationship. Then comes ministry. Relationship. Then the ministry. Relationship. Then the ministry. Relationship, then the ministry. Say that with me. Relationship, then the ministry. Relationship, then the ministry. Amen. It's your relationship with God that comes first. It's not just knowing about His Word. It's not just knowing about everything that He is. You can sit and listen to faith tapes, faith preaching. You can sit and read through your Word 25 times. The whole Bible 25 times in a sitting and just go through it and just have this mental knowledge of the Word of God. And you can talk to people and talk to people and talk to people. But where the real power is, is when it's in relationship with Heavenly Father. You don't want, see, it's knowledge that puffs up. So you can sit here over the Word and greater knowledge, knowledge, and knowledge, and have memory of it, and you can say the same things that other ministers have said, and it sounds great, it sounds good, but where it carries the power is, is when you have fellowship and relationship with this. Come on. Amen? Amen. And Jesus is the Word become flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So commune with this. Break it. You're breaking bread. You're having communion. Every time you open your Bible, I want you to look at it as you're having communion. Amen? You're receiving of His blood and you're receiving of His bread. You, you, you're, you're receiving. Amen? By faith, grab a hold of the Word of God. I'm having communion right now with my Papa. I'm coming to know him. See, it changes your whole outlook on the word. Then it just doesn't say, I gotta read my word today. I'm gonna do my devotion today. I mean, come on, have a relationship with him. Come on. Love on him. Let him love on you. Then you're gonna find true richness of his word. Then you're gonna find true strength. Then you're going to actually have some substance to minister. Then you're going to have substance around your friends. Then you're going to be able to talk to people. And they're going to perk up and they're going to listen. Yeah. Amen? Amen. See, the world just wants substance. They don't want religion. They've had enough religion. I know that's right. Let me say that again. The world wants substance. They're tired of religion. And we... God's people are to walk in this power and walk in this anointing and bring a substance to the people. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to encourage you in this place, most of you in this place, you're carrying substance. You're carrying a substance. Amen? Some of you, are, you're still learning. You're learning. You're trying to get that. You're getting that substance. It's happened. The substance is there. But it's got to come up. It's got to become more real to you. Where it is no longer a mental assent to it. It's no longer mental agreement. But it's true heart faith. It's true where your heart has grabbed a hold of it. We believe. Therefore, we speak. We have faith. Therefore, it just comes out of us. And so when anything opposite of the word of God is coming at us or spoken to us, it's like this complete rejection. Because the truth is in us and just pushes back the lie. Amen. 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 
So substance comes out of you. And the Spirit of the Lord is the substance that we have that we carry. Amen? The Word in which we believe, and, and it, goes, it just goes deep on the inside, and it's who we become. We become this. We become love. We become faith. We become the very substance of who God is, His very nature. This is what we become. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 7. Or 8, I'm going to say. <laughs> Romans 8. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to read through verse 5. We're going to actually just go down this whole chapter. Through this whole chapter. And just really let the Spirit of God do a work in us. Amen? Yeah. Of who we are. Yeah. You know, I've been talking about perfect obedience. And if you haven't been here for those, then you need to go back and, and watch those. I believe they're all on, on Facebook or, or YouTube at least. Um, the messages um, on perfect obedience. But um, there's two, two services that were really dedicated to that. And um, because ultimately this is what we desire. We want to we want to be right with God. We want to be living in, in that communion and union with Him. And communion and union was what creates perfect obedience. But we're just going to continue here in Romans chapter 8. Let's just start in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak, through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now I was touching on two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of this world, or kingdom of Satan. And I was talking about that there's no dual citizenship, right? Yeah. Well, there's also the law of sin and death, but there's also the law of the Spirit. So there's... So in essence, if you're living in the kingdom of heaven, then what law should we be living by? The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Every kingdom has its rules and its laws in place. That's right. Come on, let's do it. And if we don't live by those laws or those rules, then guess what? Eventually, you're going to get caught and you're going to get taken to jail and then you're going to be judged by the judge. Now, the thing is, is the enemy still wants to say, oh, you've been caught and you're going to be judged. And he puts, keeps putting that and he keeps trying to put that on the believer. But understand that you have been freed from the law of sin and death and you shall no longer be judged by sin and death any longer. Because you now have the very life of Christ. Jesus came in and he began judging jury and he took everything. He took everything, and not only did he become judge and jury, he also became sin for us. He became sin, and he also went to the supreme sacrifice and died for us. Amen? Amen. Now, do you notice that he said that the righteous requirement of the law would be fulfilled? The law is righteous. It seemed pretty harsh, doesn't it, when you look at it? It seems pretty harsh. But it was still righteous. It was perfect, but man in his own ability was not able to fulfill the law. He couldn't do it. No matter how hard he fought for it and struggled it and
understanding and strength. But he needed to receive a nature change. He yeah. needed to receive the new nature yes. of God within him. And he could not receive it until Jesus came and died and rose again. Yeah. Yeah. Shed his blood. The blood had to be shed. Yeah. Why? So that there can be a transference. A transfusion of His blood into our life that we receive it by faith. And then sin is dispelled out of us. That sin nature is destroyed. The blood of Jesus destroyed the sin nature in you. You are free from sin. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Now I know that this is a message that I hit on a lot. But the thing is, is the enemy keeps coming over and over again. The, the devil, it keeps hitting you. Hitting you with this, with the things. Boom. He keeps doing it and doing it and hitting you. Why? Because he wants to punch through into your mind. And set up residence there. And a stronghold there. And then come through and blacken this which has been made new. Amen. He's trying to get and set up residence. You can go right now to the conditions of the heart, the parable of all the conditions of the heart. As a man who went out and sowed seed upon the, 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 the path which the birds of the air came, immediately stole the word that was sown. So nothing even took root, nothing took place. Then it fell into the stony ground of the heart. There's stones all over the place. It, with joy they receive the word. You can see this in Christendom. With joy they receive the word. But when heat and drought came, when the pressures of life came, it dried up and, 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 and it died. And then there's the ones with the, thorn, the thorns and all the thistles and all the different things going on. The seeds were cast upon that, that ground. And, and the cares of this world and offenses came in. And because they became offended, then they walked away. They couldn't do it, handle it anymore. Yeah. Right. They became offended of it. And then the ones that have a heart that is that is ready to receive, yes. some receive, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. I'm going to tell you right now. Let's go after the full 100 fold. Let's receive the full reward. Okay? I don't want to just receive the 30 the 30. I want to receive the 100 because that's what's available for all of us. That means the full reward. That means we get it all. Because Jesus talked about the one that would, uh, he talked about those who, who when their all their works are tested by his fire. Excuse me, Paul talked about this. Their works are going to be tested by fire. And then they will be burnt up because some is wood, hay, and stubble. And then some is, is, is the precious stones and all those things. It's works of the Spirit. It's the works of the Spirit that are going to produce the, the precious stones and, and the gold, the good stuff. But the works of the flesh, the, trying to do it in your own strength. You think you're doing a good thing for God. You're, you're genuinely in your heart. You're, 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 you're genuine in what you're doing to the Lord. You're doing it unto Him. But it's only wood, hay, and stubble. You haven't fully surrendered yourself to the life of the Spirit. And so when the fire comes and burns it all up, then you're saved. But just buried right. by the skin of your teeth. Yeah, right. At least you made it to heaven. Praise the Lord. Better than burning in hell or burning right. in the lake of fire for eternity. Amen. Complete separation from God. Yeah. And there is no reprieve right. from the anguish. Some people would say, why would a loving God send people to hell? I will tell you this. God sends, and sends no one. Oh. They send themselves, themselves by the choice they make. Because life and death is set before you. Life and death is set before you. Blessing and cursing is set before you. But today I tell you to choose life. Choose the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Do you hear that? Yes. Choose the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And every day this is set before you. Life is set before you. The table has been prepared. 
See, God has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. It's the life of the Spirit, man. It's everything that Jesus has given you. You go sit down and you enjoy and you eat and you eat and you eat and you eat. And, you eat. and guess what? You ain't going to get fat. You're going to be strong. You're going to be strengthened. Amen? You can never receive too much of the Word of God. You can never receive too much of, of the Spirit of God. You just keep receiving. And then you keep pouring out. And you keep pouring out. And then you keep receiving. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So you're receiving the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So there's no more, no more condemnation for you. Are you born again? Have you received the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus? Then therefore there is no, no more condemnation. Quit condemning yourself. Quit walking around with guilt. Quit walking around with shame of the things of the past or the mistakes that you have made. You don't sit here and wallow and God forgive me, Lord, forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. He's forgiving you. That just shows lack of faith of that he's forgiven you. You simply receive it and then you start walking out. You start doing it. I mean, how would you like it if 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 somebody had offended you? They they did something, and your heart was already ready. You were already ready to forgive them. But they kept wallowing around, please forgive me, following after you, please forgive me, crying, 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 right. constantly crying over what they'd done and made a mistake. It would get on your nerves, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I thank God God is a very loving Father. He's not like us. Yeah. He's very long-suffering and patient. And guess what? Actually... I say, we're like, we're becoming like him. Amen? Yeah. We're very long-suffering and patient. But what I'm saying is, after a while, you got somebody, you're going to just say, would you stop? I'd already forgiven you the first time. And why are you still whining and crying and saying, please forgive me? What is this? We're, we're friends. Let's just continue with our friendship now. Come on. There it is. You're still part of my family. Relationship. Imagine my own son doing that. He disobeyed, and he did something. He felt guilty. He felt ashamed. We'd forgiven him. We, the correction went forth. We hugged on him, but he's still living in this place. And, yeah. Yeah. That would just be weird. Come on. In the natural terms, you would be taking them to the psych ward. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. I know that as ridiculous as this sounds... Why do we sometimes do this? Yep. In our relationship, it's, it's lack of faith. We, we oh. simply come to believe and trust in what he has done, the finished work of the cross. Right. He yeah. forgave you. He forgave you before you were even yeah. born. Yeah. For he has he's hung on Calvary's cross yeah. and took your sin and took your shame and took your guilt, and took your pain, and took your sickness, and took your disease, as he hung on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You are forgiven, you are forgiven, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Now, we all know, because I've ministered heavily on this, that it's no license now to go around out and act like the first thing. That's right. Amen. But we're to really truly bear the fruits of repentance. The fruits of repentance are that now you have this desire to walk in obedience. Yes. These fruits of repentance now is this desire, is that now you're not doing the things that you used to do, that you that you once felt guilty for and felt bad for and, and, and were sorry for, that brought you to the cross in the first place. Amen? Yeah. You were tired of yourself. You were tired. Yeah. And now it's just time to, I, need to re I just need the life of Christ. So it's no longer you that's living. It's Christ in you now. You're living through Christ Jesus, not for Him. Yeah. If you've been living for Him, stop. Yeah. Amen. Please stop. Do yourself a favor and the rest of the body of Christ. 
Stop trying to live for him and live through him. Amen. Let his life be manifested through you. Amen. 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 Yeah. But it's cooperation. That's right. It's it's giving of your will to him. It's surrendering to him now. Amen. Amen. Every day, daily. When there's opportunities to surrender, surrender. Make that decision. Make that decision today. If you have not been surrendering every day unto the Lord, make the decision that you're going to start giving yourself to Him. Yes. Not out of religion. Not out of, oh, I'm doing Him a favor. No, you're doing yourself a favor to just yield to Him. Because what you're saying is, I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to start living for Christ. I'm going to deny myself pick up my cross and follow after him. Why? Because I want to. And because I want to, that means that God put that want to on the inside of you. So that just shows you that the work has already begun on the inside. Amen? Amen. And that work will be completed into the day of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? It shall be completed. But it's just you making a decision to go full out. Full out. Because I see so many in the body of Christ that come so far in the things of the Spirit. They come so far in the Word of God. And it's just like then all of a sudden they kind of just stop. And it just becomes this stagnant thing. Because there's some things that God has put a finger on that He says, okay, you got to die. you got to let that go. Absolutely. Because I'm going to take you to the next level. Yes. And for fear, either for man or fear of your own life. And this is where I believe some people only receive the 30%. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Amen. I believe really that's why, because I was like, God, I know you want to give us the full reward. I know that you want to give us the full, you want us to receive the full 100%. The fullness of it. So I don't. I want that perfect obedience so I can get to that place where I know that I'm receiving the full reward, Amen. the hundred yeah. percent. So there's that part. They, they love God. There's this relationship, but you know we don't want partial obedience. We want full on yeah. obedience. Yeah. And you start getting into that that uh, that realm, and then all of a sudden things are sometimes built. With wood, hay, and stuff. Yep. Amen. Amen. It's full. Just give it full on. Yeah. Give your heart full on. Yeah. Why, 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 why even, why even hold back? Well, I'm not, I'm not this or I'm not that. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell because Jesus said that you're more than a conqueror. Yep. So Paul, <laughs> as he wrote, but Jesus spoke to him. <laughs> The Holy Ghost told him. Amen. This is the word we come from. Amen. <laughs> You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. You are victorious in him. Amen. He said, You're ahead and not the tail. You're That's above right. and not beneath. That's right. yes, sir. You're blessed going out of the city. You're blessed coming back in. That doesn't sound like somebody that who's not. Well, I'm not so smart. I didn't get good grades in school. I don't care. You can be uneducated and not know how to read, and God can use you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes. He can yes. use you to turn this world upside yes. down. Yes. 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 Come on. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I mean, you got people in China that only get small chunks of the Bible, and they will memorize it verbatim because they're so... There's, they don't get the word like we do. They don't have multiple Bibles sitting on their shelves. They don't have they don't have the cordons and all the different things to break down the Greek and the Hebrew. They got them, the Holy Ghost, and that little chunk of Bible, and they just keep reading it and reading it. And then what are they doing? They're really fellowshipping with it because to them they see it's Jesus. Every time they open, it's Jesus. Jesus is being revealed to me. Jesus is being revealed. And here they got. They got little chunks, little chunks, and here they got churches of thousands and thousands of yeah, people. Yeah. So what's our excuse? Yeah. Oh, to give ourselves, yes. 
we just got to give ourselves fully. You see, they're not afraid to die. They're not afraid to, for people to say, well, you don't know very much, or you're not very smart, or well, you're not the greatest speaker. No. They just yield to the anointing. They yield to the Holy Ghost. They full-on surrender. There's no more condemnation but for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Satan's desire is to constantly bring condemnation to you. That you're not a good enough Christian. How many have heard that in your life? Yeah. How many have struggled with that in your life? Yeah. You're not a good enough Christian. Well, I don't have this, or I just, I'm not a great orator. Um, I'm afraid to talk to people. <clears throat> See, all these things, but if you just give yourself to the Holy Spirit and give yourself fully to the Lord, the fear will be destroyed. And you'll begin to speak by the utterance of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And it still do it doesn't even matter, even if you do stutter over your words yeah. and the anointing is there, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. So right. it really That's doesn't right. even That's matter right. if you have this great flow. I mean, it makes it easier for people to listen if you can speak well. But still, that's not where it lies. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's not the great orator that destroys the yoke. Come on. That's right. Amen. Yeah, yeah, it's the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the anointing. It's not you. See, the Lord doesn't want this for us to be making this all about us. Christianity, in a sense, it's, it's, it's our relationship. We die to ourselves. We're now following after him. It's the, and that's what Jesus, that's the same example that Jesus lived before us. He says, I don't do my own will. I only do what the Father has called me to do. And he says, my judgments are righteous and true and holy because I'm not doing this in my own will. It's not my own will. It's not my own desires. I have submitted myself yeah. completely to the will of the Father. Yeah. Whatever He wants me doing, whatever He wants me saying. And that's the life we now live in this world. Mm -hmm. Fully surrendered to the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So he condemned the sin. It's condemned. He pronounced uh, that the sin shall be condemned. Not you. Amen. He separated you yeah. from that sin. Amen. But that you, in order to remain separated from sin, you remain in him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Living the life of the spirit. The law was only set in place to show men that they had sin. It was the righteous. It was righteous. It was pure. It was right. And it just, it was like a pool of water that's really, really clear and clean. And you take the stick and you go and stir up the pool. Guess what? It gets dirty because of all the mud that's on the bottom comes to the surface. So was the law. That it was like a stick that was stirred in the heart of man. Man thinking, oh, look, I'm doing the law. I'm doing good. Uh, uh, uh. There, look. You can't do it in your own strength. You need Jesus. You need his blood. And so the law was weak in the fact that it could not change the hearts of men. So God came down to put himself back in you. Because he once was in Adam and Eve. He came to put himself, his spirit, back in you. Amen. And now that is the law in which you live by, yes. is the law of the spirit, the life of the spirit. Are you seeing the difference now? Are you understanding that you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven? Yes. That you now are to represent, you are ambassador of God Almighty. That's what you are, by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you go, oh, I thought I was just saved so that I could 
escape hell and go to heaven and go to church on Sunday and be a good little person. That's not Christianity. No. That's right. It's so that you can live with the very life of God, that yes. you can manifest greater, Him, greater works. His power, His yeah. might, His goodness, everything that He is. And the good news is, is that it's just you simply <coughs> walking it out, living it out. He did it. He did everything. Amen? Amen. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Don't be one who is lukewarm. That is one who is caught up trying to live the spirit and live the flesh. There's no dual citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. He said you'll be like lukewarm and I'll spit you out of my hand. That's not what the Lord wants. That's right. It's one or the other. Renounce it. But I will tell you, don't sit back and go, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. You're right, you can't do it. Instead, you go, God, I know I can't do this. But you can. You can do this in me. And I can live this life now. I can live this life in the Spirit now. Through you. Yes. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see how much easier this makes? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Now the difference is now what needs to happen is, is if there's any desire for the things of the world and you recognize it and you don't want it there, you gotta say, I don't want this desire. Yeah. God, I thank oh. you that you remove it from me. I can't do this myself. I can't do this right now. So I'm giving it to you, yeah. and I'm just gonna choose to live the life of the spirit. Because Today is set before you life and death. Blessing and curse. So choose life. And we know the life is his spirit. It's his spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay. So we have the message of the carnal mind put before us every single day. On yeah. billboards, on Facebook, in news, in the TV shows, in sports, all this other stuff. Whenever we watch it, the mind, the carnal mind is constantly put before us. The message of the kingdom of Satan is constantly crammed down our throat. Every day. Every day. And how else do you think, as you keep taking this in, taking this in, and taking this in... It is entertainment and all the different things that we take in. Do you think that it's not in some way it's going to affect you after a while? <laughs> There's a whole other vision. There's a whole other. The, 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 the law of sin and death is being presented before you all the time. The carnal nature. Boom, 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 boom. Satan's back at it again. Diablo. Boom, boom. Bouncing that ball till he penetrates. Bouncing that lie off your head till it penetrates. <laughs> And where he gets it, where we're dealing with this stuff, now as you're seeing the knowledge of the tree of good and evil now. You're seeing that all before you. You see straight up evil. That's, that's a no-brainer. But then, oh no, the good. This is not about the goodness of God. It's good. Man's self-righteousness. Good. And so there's a lot of good people out there. A lot of friendly people out there. And I'm not saying we're against them. We love them. But it's a real deceptive thing because what it is is then what happens is you see believers that are not strong in the Lord. They hook up with the good people but don't have a relationship with Heavenly Father. Don't really have that strongness. They're not able to stand and go, hey, they're good people. God, why would you send them to hell? And you start doubting right. God. Right. You start doubting Him. Why would you send them to hell, God? They're good people. They're really nice to me. Matter of fact, they're nicer to me than some people in the church. <laughs> Mom, that should not be. That's right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you all hear me? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Listen, we should be the most loving people yes. on the face yes. of the planet. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 It's the goodness of God that leads men to That's repentance. Right. Allow the goodness of God to flow out of you. Not right. the goodness of the good of, that you've been delivered from. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that you're able to be good in it. But the goodness of God. Listen, Jesus, the woman, God bless you, the Lord, are watching. <laughs> but uh, the phone fell over. <laughs> just lift your hands, all of you that are watching right now. I don't know how many, but Father, right now, I just thank you for your presence and your anointing to saturate and fill each person. Bless them with their socks. Bless their socks off. And Father, if they live in this area, Lord, draw them to be here at church on Sunday, next Sunday. Amen. 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 Come on, guys. If you live in this area and you're watching, you can be here. Amen. Amen. But if you're not, be blessed. You two that are watching are in the area. Lord, bless them right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. I did not forget where I was at. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil. So there's so many people. Don't allow the enemy to pull you aside and get you, you hooking up with people that are doing just good things only. Now, we need to be in people's lives. Yeah. But we're not to be, we're not to be uh, unequally yoked with them. That's right. That means we don't develop these deep and relationships with these individuals. Because what happens is, oh, before you know it, then you start having compromise in your life. And you just, all of a sudden you find yourself just compromising the word more and more and more. And you've drifted. You're no longer living the life of the Spirit. You begin to live out of that way that seems right to man. And see, that's what the knowledge of the tree of good and evil was about, that good part. It's the way that seems right to man. Self-righteousness. See, that's, that's not what we're called to live. We're called to live the life of the Spirit. Amen. 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 But now you can go back and you can look at Jesus. Remember he made a quarter of whips. He flipped over the table. He would say, that doesn't seem too loving, Jesus. Yeah, that's loving his father. That zeal that he has for the house of God. So what I'm saying is in the house of God, things need to be in order and in place. There needs to be perfect obedience. To the world, we don't necessarily go at them and just start beating them and, and doing all that stuff. And with the word of God, you gotta yeah, yeah. you got to show them with the love of God. you got to show them, hey, you've been forgiven. God can deliver you. Now, they might even get offended and take that as if you're judging them. Yeah. Understand this. Yeah. Yeah. But if you still show love, that's why he says, don't love in just word and in deed. I mean, just love and love and word. But love and deed also. Yeah. So we're going to love in both. Yeah. Show them the deed. Back up your words. Back up your words. Back up the life of the Spirit that's on the inside of you. Amen. 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 If you're going to tell somebody that there's a better way to live, then you live it before them. That's the yes. Yes. Amen. 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 This is what we're called to do. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. It's the life of the Spirit. Amen. And you can do this. Yes. It's just full on surrender. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So get your mind on the things what is spiritually minded. If you don't know what it is, then just get into the Word of God. Renew yeah. your mind to the Word of God. Constantly be in it and just say, Lord, I thank you that you're maturing me, you're strengthening me. I thank you that the Holy Spirit will teach me, give me deep understanding and wisdom. So what, what does this really mean? We're now living by the law of the Spirit. That means now that we are now allowing ourselves to be governed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's good. We are now giving ourselves to be governed by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. We're governed in the kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Because the carnal mind is enmity, it's an enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor neither can, indeed can it be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You just can't please. Listen, if you're living in that realm, you're not pleasing Him. Yeah. Okay? It's that simple. Doesn't mean He hates you. Not, not, doesn't mean that He's mad at you. He loves you. And He's going to constantly draw you and convict you by the Holy Ghost. Until you get it right. Listen. Don't quit pressing into the things of God and yielding to the Holy Ghost. Yes. Just keep going. 
And then you'll find your stuff starting to get it right and living the life. <clears throat> but if you recognize that you're not fully getting it, but you have this desire to get it, don't quit. That's right. Don't get all ashamed and then back off and leave the church. Because what's happening is you're being choked with the cares of the world. You're being choked out. Don't allow the enemy to choke you out. Don't tap out. Even if you see stars. Don't tap out. Come on. Because the Holy Ghost will flood you. If you don't quit, you're going to win. And you rise up in the strength of God. And you come back fighting and swing. You don't tap out. The gospel is a strong man's gospel. Yeah. Yeah. And we will not bring reproach to the body of Christ. We will be those that are set apart and holy before God. We will live lives that please Him. Amen. Because we live in Him and allow Him to live through us. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. This is what Paul's telling the Roman church. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But listen, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, and you know that you're, he's none of his, but you desire to be, then ask Jesus in your heart. Yeah. It's that simple. And surrender your life. Amen. Don't just ask Him with your mouth. Yeah. But with your heart. Yes. Of faith. And allow Him to change your nature. Father, I thank you that you're changing my nature. We've had so many people in Christendom, they just pray this prayer. But no change. Oh. Because the heart was not involved in the prayer. That's it. Involve the heart. Surrender the heart. Because that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. That's where the nature is going to come in. And that's where the desire is going to come to live for God. To live for God. Or should I say, live through God. Amen? Amen? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who, that raised up Jesus... From the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells within you. In a long time I got revelation of that. I just like, my gosh, that's divine healing. Right there, that's divine healing. That means if you're completely surrendered to the life of the spirit... The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Make your mortal body alive. Not your spirit body. Your spirit man already been made alive. Your mortal body. This thing, the body of the, 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 the earth suit, in a sense, that keeps our spirit man here on the earth. He shall quicken your mortal body. Ooh, that makes me just want to yield even more. Just surrender everything. Get it all. Surrender everything so you can have it all. Walk in it all. Divine health and healing is yours. Yes. He makes your mortal body alive. Yes. And may the, I pray that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Divine health. How many knew that was in there? Come on, raise your yeah. hand. If you knew that was yeah. in there, raise your hand. How many didn't know that was in there? And now you got it. Praise God. Go grab it. It's yeah. yours. Yeah. It belongs to you. Yes. We only perish because of lack of knowledge. Right. Yeah. And I'm not talking head knowledge. I'm talking spirit knowledge. Yeah. I'm talking revelation knowledge that comes by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. But you still got to get the mind involved. The mind's got to still read it, take it, and then you meditate on that, and then it drops down in your heart and becomes a reality to you. Your heart of faith grabs a hold of it and it comes alive. Amen? Amen. The mind still gets involved. The renewed mind. Amen? Amen. So, for if you live after the flesh, 
Okay, hold on. Where did we go here? Twelve. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. So you're no longer debtors to that thing anymore. You're not bound to it. You don't own, owe it anything. That's right. That's what he just said. You don't owe flesh anything. So the next time temptation comes along, that old snake tries to come back and tempt you like he tempt Eve, tempted Eve and Adam in the garden. Because that's what he does. He's the tempter. To get you to doubt God. To doubt his goodness. To, to doubt who he is. So when he comes back to tempt you, you just say, I don't owe you anything. That's right. That's Even if you got to say it out loud. Yeah. I don't owe you anything. You don't, I don't belong to you. You don't, belong, you don't have anything in me. You don't own me. I belong to God. Amen? For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Did you hear that? For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Adam and Eve all over again. But if you live through the Spirit... Do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So in other words, you constantly yielding to the Holy Ghost, you're putting to death the deeds of, of the body. You're putting to death those things that once held you down. They're not in you. Okay? You're putting to death those temptations. You're putting them to death by the Spirit. Because you've been, remember, you've been freed from sin. The nature of sin. You have the law of the, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus in you. So it's not like you're going around putting to death something that's in you. You're putting to death what used to be in you. That those temptations, you're killing it by the spirit of God. You're staying in the spirit. Amen? So you shall live. It's the life of the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Yeah. So we walk not round now as princes in the kingdom of heaven. Because that's what you want. You're a prince in the kingdom of heaven. Because you're a son of God. You're sons of God. You belong to Him. All through Christ Jesus, you're sons of God. But it keeps getting better. When you live by the Spirit. Because it says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption or sonship. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Papa, Papa. Yeah. We cry, Papa, Papa. Yeah. How did this just worship? I mean, when I'm worship, I'm going, Papa, Papa, I love you. I thank you. You're so awesome. You're so good. Thank you. Thank you for giving me your spirit. Thank you that you live in me. I thank you that I'm getting to know you even more. Oh, and you just and then you just remember what he delivered you from and set you free. And then tears start coming. Oh, Lord, I love you so much. You're so awesome. Overwhelmed by the goodness of God. You're in relationship with him. This is the life of the spirit. How many are you getting something here now? How many are you recognizing the two? The two laws now that you live by, the law of the spirit and then the law, there's two. We don't have to live by the law of the flesh anymore That's and right. sin and death. We live by the law of the spirit. Amen. This is who you are. You've been adopted. You're citizens now. You're, I mean, you're sons. Hallelujah. You're not just a subject of the kingdom. You're sons in the kingdom. That's right. Did you get this? Yeah. You're not just subjects in the kingdom. You're sons in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Whereby we cry out of our Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. How many in here are children? Yes. How many in here are children? How many of you bear witness? Yes. And today... If you can't bear witness that you are children, 
then we can rectify that. We can see that change in your life. Yes, sir. So that you can bear witness that you are children of, of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you are children, then you are, and it gets better, you are heirs. Heirs of God. And what? Joint heirs with Christ Jesus. That means everything that he got a hold of. Everything that he purchased and paid for. Everything that God had promised him and given to him has been given to us. That is why we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And God has taken him and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. He sat down. And guess what? We're seated with him. Because we are in Christ Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. Get the understanding of this. Get the revelation of this. Some of you haven't gotten it yet. You got to be swinging from the chandelier and so the lights up here. Come on now. Get it, you won't know what to do with yourself. You'll just take off through the ceiling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. Oh. If we even suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. As we're in this world, there is the desire within us to be glorified. And so we're carrying out a suffering in a way to resist sin and remain walking in righteousness. There's that, 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 that whole thing. But, but it'll get so strong in us, the Spirit of God rising up in us so strong that... Oh, that not even the sins of the world, those things aren't even going to be so much the thing that do us, just this trip us up. But now it's just, yeah. it's just, man, I just want to be with God. Because yeah. at the end, that's where, that's where, that's where Paul was at. I just want to be right. with God. But yeah. if it benefits you all for me to remain, right. then I will remain. Because yeah. let's continue here. You can yeah. see this. Yes. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You're going to face persecutions. You're going to face those sufferings. You're going to face opposition. Paul faced opposition to the gospel. He'd come in and the Judaizers would come in with all kinds of crazy stuff and just pervert the truth. Yeah. And you look in the earth, that's why we have so many religions. Truth has been perverted. Yeah. And it's all been designed by Satan to keep men from the cross. Yeah. It's all these religions, a form of godliness. But there's no power to save their soul. Yeah. There's no power to regenerate them and make them new. Yeah. To change their nature. That's why it's so imperative that we do not become actors on the, on the set of this life. Oh. It means hypocrites. Yeah. Yeah. But that we allow him to change us to our, in our very core. Christ within us, the hope of glory. Amen. 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 Our hypocrites. Children of God Almighty. I don't want to play like I'm a child. Come on. Act like a child. Don't really be a child. Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils and away from me? You workers of iniquity, I've never knew you. Amen. 
the name of God will not be profaned through us. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church that is fully yielded to the Spirit of God. We're going to reap a hundredfold. Amen. Yes. In this church, we're reaping a hundredfold. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Say, I will, I will reap, reap a hundredfold. A hundredfold. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because I fully give myself to you. I fully give myself to you. I will walk. I will walk. In perfect obedience. In perfect obedience. Not in my own strength. Not in my own strength. But by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, verse 18, to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen, the, the, the things of the world are going to press in around you. They're just going to. We're going to face sufferings. Don't allow that thing to choke you out and cause you to be offended at the gospel yes. because you're going through hardships. Yes. Yeah. Don't be offended at the gospel. Don't yes. be offended yeah. because yeah. you maybe got beat yeah. up. Don't be offended yeah. because maybe somebody said something mean yeah. about you. Don't be offended because somebody might have said some, a lie about you. Come on now. Yeah. Don't be offended at Jesus. Don't be offended yeah. at the gospel. Yeah. Because something happened in your life or... or, 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 or yeah. A situation or a hardship. So many people have backed off the gospel because of a hardship. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> the Lord says He takes no pleasure in those who shrink back. Doesn't mean He doesn't love them. Just means He takes no pleasure. Just like in my own children. Now, I'm not going to take pleasure in them if they stop walking in obedience and yeah. shrink back from yeah. obeying. I'm going to have pleasure in them. I'm going to love them still, and I'm going to keep saying, come on, let's get it right. Don't keep making mistakes. Don't keep yeah, doing yeah, this yeah, because yeah, you're yeah. going to face the consequences every yeah. time. Yeah. It's not my desire to have to correct you all the time. Right. Yeah. Come on, let's That's get this right. right. Yeah. Let's get this right. Come on now. Amen. 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 For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was manifested, was, excuse, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. <clears throat> so as the children of God walk in it, then the creature in this, they're going to get delivered from it. Just like the Bible talked about that, that a child will be able to put their hand down in the, the den of an asp and it will not hurt them. And that the bear and the lamb will be together and the lion. Come on, this is what's going to come upon the earth. This is what's there's not going to be enemy thing. There's not, the, the, the lion will eat grass like an ox. This is what's coming to the earth. Yeah. And when Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom on the earth. Amen. Yeah. And we'll rule with him and reign with him a thousand years. And that means we'll be teaching the rest of the sons, the rest of the people. We'll be teaching them. Amen. Yeah. And some of you that don't know, understand all of that, I'm not going to get into that right now. We can get into that later. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But see, that's what's coming. The, the, the earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestations of the sons of God. Because they want to be delivered from this thing. They want to be delivered from the yeah. strife. They want to be delivered from this hatred and this pain and this division and everything that's going on. It's only in the spirit. Yeah. It's only yielding to him. It's only through Christ. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. What is this redemption of our bodies? To, to put on the glorified body. Yeah. 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 1 Corinthians 1, 21 through 
22. For after that, in the wise, uh, for after that, for after that, in the wise wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that, that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Establishes us which with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So He's given us the Spirit within our hearts. What to seal us? The earnest. The, the earnest. In other words, what He's saying is that He's that promise. It's the proof that we shall be redeemed that we shall put on the glorified body, and that we're going to go to heaven. Amen. So listen, if you've received the Spirit, that is proof that you are a child of God. Amen. He's the earnest. It's like earnest money that you put down, yeah. amen, on a house. Yeah. And, it, and, and that, that locks you in. That you're getting that house. It becomes yours. Yeah. Well, guess what? You get to go to heaven. You're part of the kingdom. It's proof that you're now a citizen now because the Spirit of God oh, is yeah. on the inside of you. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? And then... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then 5 in verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God. Who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. I'm going to just read this little side note. It says, God has given us the earnest of the first fruit of the Spirit as a guarantee that we will be resurrected and put on immortality. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accept, accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the thing done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or, or bad. Right. So we're all going to stand before yeah. him. Yeah. So let's yield to the life of the Spirit. I'm going to stop yeah. there because I know it can continue. And I want to go all the way through the rest of Romans chapter 8 here. Because it just keeps getting better and better oh, yeah. as, you, as we go through this whole chapter. And maybe take this week and just read it and meditate on it. Meditate on it. Get revelation. Go get cross-references and just dig through it and let it just minister to your heart and explode within you. Because what happens is you're going to start fellowshipping with the Word and fellowshipping with the Spirit. And this message that I'm bringing to you today is going to become alive on the inside of you. And you will become, and you are a people of the Spirit, Amen. living by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. But that's why it's so imperative that we live by the Holy Ghost because we are going to stand before the judgment of right. Christ. And we're going to have to give an account of the things in which we have done, good or bad. Amen? Amen. Yes. But I want you to understand this. You perceive the Holy Ghost, and guess what? You're going to be redeemed. And be confident in that. And don't allow the enemy to lie to you anymore. No more. Yeah. I'm telling you, you ain't got it. I'm telling you, you've got it. You've got the goods. You've got the stuff. You've got the life of God. So now let's live it. Let's live it to the full extent. Let's get the 100%. Amen. Let's get the hundredfold. The hundredfold. 
Let's get after him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody just stand up on your feet. Father, just bless those on Facebook right now as, they get ready to, as we get ready to sign off. And I just thank you for your anointing to saturate them. And right now, if you're watching, or you wind up watching this later, and you need, and you just really need Jesus, you really need Him, and you want to live this life of the Spirit, and you know that you haven't really been doing it. Maybe you've been living one foot in and one foot out. Maybe you've been living a life that, 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 that is lukewarm. But I'm telling you now to start living in the kingdom of heaven. Start living by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Right now, just pray this prayer. And the rest of you can pray this prayer with me. Right now. Just dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. Fully. Fully. To the life of the spirit. To the life of the spirit. I thank you. I thank you. That I don't live. According to the law of sin and death. But I live according to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus, you've made your home in me. Because I've confessed you. As my Lord and my Savior. And I've believed upon you with my heart. For you said. With the mouth. Confession, Confession is made unto salvation. salvation. And I believe. And I believe. Therefore, I speak. Therefore I speak. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Reign strong in me. Reign strong in me. Be big in me. Be big in me. I yield to you. I yield to you. And I'll thank you now that you're quickening my mortal body. Sickness and disease, you go. I receive the life of Christ. I thank you that my body is being quickened now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Opportunity to come forward and just, just come to the altar. Just come to the altar. Just come to the altar and let the Lord touch you. And you just make a fresh keep rededication. Some of you, you might just need to make a dedication unto the Lord. If you need to fully surrender to the Lord, if you don't know the Lord in this place, then come forward. I believe everybody here does know the Lord. But if you don't, for half a chance, you don't, I want to make sure that you do know Him experientially and have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? But it's time to give everything. You You know in this place if you haven't given Him everything. You know. But right now is the time to give Him everything. Give it all. 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 Surrender it all. Because we want to give our life full into the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus mighty name. This is not the time to just say, oh, the church is over. Let's press in now. Just let them touch you right now. Because right now I'm decreeing and declaring that within you there's an expansion to contain more of the things of God. That you're not caught up in time. You're not worried about what time it is. But you're so enraptured. You're so caught up in the Spirit. You don't even care. Because you're so lost in Him. That's what I'm praying. That you're so hungry. That you just want to keep going. You want to keep doing it. Amen. Amen.
Jesus is your new humanity, not the natural man, not the old man, yeah. not the way you thought, not the way you were taught by natural man. Jesus is your humanity to walk in. See where he is seated. Stand where you belong in your small, simple situation. Oh, from his perspective, seated with him, how small the things of the world will seem. Oh, you are seated with him in heavenly places. Your kingdom is heaven. Your citizenship is heaven. You belong with him. You should see with his perspective and the things of earth and the things of the natural life will grow surprisingly dim. Oh, you're seated with him. Yes. He's your humanity. Oh, he saw the storm that he was sleeping through because he knew who he was. And when natural man woke him up and said, what are you going to do? He merely spoke and the circumstances obeyed. Yes. Yes. And he was even angered with the disciples because they thought so small. They were so carnal. They were so natural. Oh, but say I'm seated with him. Seated with I him. see what he sees. I walk as he walks. I talk as he talks. Yes. I walk in victory over the natural things. I walk in victory over the beggarly things of the earth. I walk in victory over the devil, for he's under my feet. I am not subject to carnal desire. I am not subject to sin, death, the devil. I am only subject to my king. Yes. I am only subject to my example of humanity. Not men on TV. Not men and women in entertainment. Not the man on the street. But Jesus, my king, who is seated in heaven. That's where I see from. That's where I live from. That's where I walk in victory and overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're about to let you know. We're about to let you know. We're about to let you know. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Amen. Neither does he tempt any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own light, his own lusts, and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And, when it, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Now we're going to take this. And we're going to flip this in the reverse. The Father wants to draw you and entice you into his presence for the purpose of conception. He wants intimacy with you. He doesn't want you just sitting here going through the motions. He wants you to engage him with your heart, to conceive. If there's no intimacy, there's no conception. Amen. If there's no conception, there's no bearing of fruit. Yes, yes. If husband and wife are not intimate, they won't conceive. If they're not intimate and don't conceive, they won't have no children. We want to bear the image of our Father. Amen. The Father it always has an invitation out for us, drawing us, enticing us, just the way sin and the devil wants to entice us and draw us into these, these things. Father God is drawing us, he's enticing us into his presence, that we can conceive holiness, we can conceive righteousness, we give birth to the will and the plans of the Lord. Here in the earth, he didn't make it hard. He made it so easy. You can see the natural in the man and woman marriage relationship. You go to the room, you close the door, you become intimate. There's conception. Seed time of harvest. Boom, you have, you have fruit. It's the same thing with the Father. 
You go up, you close the door, you open up the, the doors of your heart. Yeah. Yes. You allow that intimacy with him. And it, it, that seed the holiness, that seed of righteousness is planted on the inside and it brings forth. Amen. supply going on. God had commanded ravens to bring him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh at night. Somebody say supernatural. Supernatural. That's a supernatural provision from heaven. He didn't need anything else. He didn't need, he didn't need any more. God hooked up, had him hooked up. His needs were supplied. But he, he spoke to him. The Lord spoke to him and said, get up, depart from here, go to this certain place. I don't remember the name of it. But I've commanded a, a widow to provide for you there. Everybody say commanded. Commanded. Everybody say supernatural. Supernatural. And commanded. Commanded. God had commanded a widow to provide for him there. So he got up and he left. He left that provision and went. He was already supplied. Who, who did God have in mind when he commanded that widow to provide, to, to give, give him something? Widow. The widow. He didn't have a legend in mind, I don't believe. Because he was already, the, the ravens could have followed him. They got wings, right? There's air, there's air space where God, wanted, where God was sending him for the ravens to fly. Amen? He didn't need anyone. She needed a supernatural supply. She needed in on it. She needed in on God's provision. Come on. Everybody say commanded. Commanded. And supernatural. Supernatural. Over and over again, we see in the Bible where there's going to be supernatural supply. There's going to be a supernatural obedience. There's going to be an obedience to the supernatural voice of the Lord. Over and over and over again. And it moves beyond your needs to the needs of the 5,000 men, not including women and children. A little boy with, with fishes and loaves, a tiny amount. God got to obey the Lord and get involved with the feeding of a multitude. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This is our life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the Lord, God, what do you command me? What do you want me to do? What do I need to do? What, where, what's my obedience to get in on your supernatural supply? And then do that, yeah. even if it's scary. Yeah. For the woman, it was scary. For the woman, it was Dude, bro, I'm going to make this, and my my son and myself are going to eat it and die. This is literally it. Not this is not an American situation. Right. Yeah. This is not a there's a welfare backup situation. There's a food bank down the street. We're going to eat it and die. Everything. Put yourself in that position where God says, well, just, "Just go ahead. That's fine. Just just give me everything. Go go do what you're going to say, but bring me a little cake of it first. And the oil didn't run out, and the meal didn't run out, and God is God is supernatural supply showed up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He doesn't. And then think about that little boy. He got to be involved in the feeding of a multitude, and that's where God wants to bring us. God is able to make all grace abound towards us, so that we always having all sufficiency, so that we always having all sufficiency have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Amen. It's over and over again in the Bible. Yes. Obedience is where is where obe obeying God 
This is where his provision comes from. Amen. That's exciting. So it could be exciting. Obeying God. All the scary things can be exciting. When you know what's coming. Amen. So let's everybody just pray. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do today? How do 